What happens when you lose a tooth? It depends what tooth it is. For example, most people do need to have their wisdom teeth removed because of evolution. We don't have enough rooms in our mouths. But let's say it's a front tooth. You obviously want it back because it affects, first of all, your aesthetics and then function. But also if it's a you know, back tooth, let's say it's your one tooth before the back. Many, many people tell me, oh, it's a back tooth. I don't care. I just eat with the other side. Keep in mind, eating with the other side means you are overworking the other side. So you're gonna break them probably faster and overcompensate on that side. Even the muscles on the other side get bigger, sometimes not in a way that you usually can see, but there's a lot of pressure on that side, on the other side where you have all of your teeth, on the muscles, on the teeth, and even on the joint you have here. Now, what else can happen? I always say when you remove a tooth from the middle, it's like removing a book from a bookshelf. Everything collapses. The neighboring teeth will come toward each other. The top tooth grows down or the bottom tooth grows up. Basically, the rule of thumb is teeth always move until something stops them. So either they're touching each other or they're touching the upper gum or the lower lip or something, right? Now, if I have removed the tooth, what do I want as options for me to replace that tooth so this doesn't happen? One can be denture. Second, a dental bridge. Third, an implant. These are the three options you have to replace a missing tooth. A denture first is the, usually the most affordable option. It is cheaper because there is less work to be done to get it ready for you. It is a removable option. So at nighttime when you go to bed, you have to, have to, have to remove it. You can't just sleep with it every night because it can cause so many issues for your gum, including oral fungal infection. It's usually not the best option because of a couple of reasons. One, unfortunately, it's usually not the most comfortable option. It kind of pinches on the gum sometimes. Even if you make the best of the best, your bone underneath starts shrinking eventually due to age. And and then it becomes loose and then you're gonna need another denture. People usually don't like their aesthetics because you know nowadays nobody wants to remove things from their mouth they want everything glued in but if you think that's the best option for you and of course as I said it's most affordable you can get a denture that's still a very very good option you just have to manage your expectations it's gonna at the beginning cause more salivation so you're gonna have a bit more saliva in your mouth because there is something foreign all the time sticking to your gut you have have to give it time for yourself to get used to it. At the beginning, your dentist will tell you, go home, it might pinch on your gum, come back, for example, next week, I wanna check where it's pinching, and then I'm gonna relieve that pressure. You might need to come back a couple of times for adjustment, and you have to keep in mind that you have to, have to, have to remove them when you sleep, otherwise, as I said, it can cause a lot of complications. The second option is a dental bridge, which as the name suggests, it will bridge between the two teeth that are still there. Now I say two, but sometimes we need to use more teeth to handle the pressure from that one or two teeth that are missing, for example. So let's imagine that you are missing one tooth in the middle, but there are still two very healthy teeth on the side. One option for you would be to put two crowns, one on each tooth on the side, holding a fake tooth in the middle. That is called a dental bridge. A dental bridge is glued to your existing teeth. So basically you don't have to worry about removing it and putting it back on. One of the downsides of dental bridge would be that you have to shave the neighboring teeth. You have to remove tooth structure from the neighboring teeth to be able to fit two crowns on top of them. Now, sometimes those teeth are already damaged. They do need a crown anyways, then fantastic. Two birds, one stone. But you have to keep in mind that sometimes the teeth are extremely healthy and to add another tooth in the middle you are damaging them for no reason all of that being said a dental bridge is still a very fantastic option because it's glued to the teeth and it is semi-permanent it doesn't last you for a lifetime but I would say their average life usually is about 15 years I have seen dental bridges sometimes that last 30 years and they are fantastic the long life depends on how well the job was done by your dental professional and how amazing is your oral hygiene for example a dental bridge is connected to the next teeth so you cannot generally naturally floss between them right there is no way to go down there are specific flosses that you can use and kind of thread it underneath the bridge and clean in that area now i understand that that would be a little bit more work and people barely like flossing as is but if you don't want food 
of decades get stuck underneath there, you do have to use that kind of floss. The third option, which I think is the best option, but I cannot be the judge of that, you should be, because it really depends on your budget and how your oral environment is at that time, is a dental implant. A dental implant will be screwed inside the bone, the bone will grow around it, and then a crown or a top part will be added to the whole thing. The good thing about the dental implant is because it has kind of a root part, which is the dental implant itself, when you bite on it, you have that sensation, that tactile sensation that you're actually biting on something. Imagine that you're biting on a dental bridge or a denture. Because it doesn't connect to your bone, the sensation kind of spreads to the neighboring teeth. Now, it might not be a problem for one missing tooth, but if you have all of your teeth missing, for example, obviously implants would feel much, much more natural to you than biting with a denture. It acts and functions just as your regular tooth. And one very good thing about it is when you remove a tooth from inside the bone, it's like removing a plant from soil. The soil will get washed away because the roots of that plant or the tree were holding the soil together. Now the tooth, the roots of the tooth was holding that part of your bone together. As soon as you remove the tooth, the bone starts to shrink. At the beginning, it's so small that you cannot really see it or feel it, or it won't affect you. But let's say if you have left it for a couple of years and only a couple of years, you are already gonna see few millimeters missing. A dental implant, because it has a root part, as I said, which is the implant part that's embedded inside your root, it will hold the bone together and you will not get bone shrinkage as long as you have a good oral hygiene and the implant doesn't fail. The implant can fail sometimes about in about 5% of the cases on average, but that's the risk that you have to be willing to take to get a really, really good prosthesis to replace a missing tooth.